<sighs> Today I was going to be hoping to do a video on the fact that West Ham have signed on out Dan, Dan Juma. And a here we go from Fabrizio and a tick from ex West Ham employee. And only look at ex West Ham employee tweets when it comes to West Ham, by the way, because when you see <clears throat> reporters, reporters say that we're in talks and, and talks are. Uh, but progressed and um, all of that kind of stuff. Just wait till an Xbox Time employee reports something, and if you don't have the Patreon, just wait for someone on Twitter to quote it. That's what I do because I can't afford um, any sort of money. But Xbox Time employee, um, probably the only one doing a great job in, in terms of like the reporters reporting on West Ham. Don't believe 90 minute football either. Just because when Nair for Gwerd was. When they said. Uh, Nair for, it's not Nair for Gwerd, it's Nair for Gare, sorry. Nair for Gare, when he was joining West Ham. Um, It was obviously meant. We all thought it was meant to go a week before because he got taken out of the Morocco game and then. Um, they said he's. It's because he was travelling to London. Now, if you, I mean, if you pay attention to that. I think his name is like Toby Cutworth or whatever his fucking name is. Um, uh, his rep his reports are always based on what Twitter say. Now he will look at whatever is on Twitter and all the reports on Twitter, and then he'll report it afterwards. If he's reported something first, it's probably not that credible. Do not listen to Talksport either, because they are friends with our owners. Now, I hate our owners as much as anyone, but this transfer breakdown is not because of our owners. Moyes has had his doubts about personal terms, higher wage, Dan Juma wants, despite him wanting to stay in London, I think he wants a bit more um, than what people are saying. But then again, so does Lingard, but I think Moyes probably believes there's more of a negotiation with Lingard and... I take Twitter with a pinch of salt nowadays because I think everyone has a short-term memory. Um, fans in general are a bit fickle anyway. You saw the Lukaku video yesterday of the, the Inter fans celebrating that he was there, which was interesting. Um, but in my opinion, I think everyone just wants Moyes to fail on Twitter. I'm not having this because Moyes has taken full control. I, I'm... Pissed off at Moyes for not getting this transfer over the line and the fact that it was right there. This could have been one of the easiest transfers ever. Um, if he feels like it's going to affect the Brozier deal and we, we're going to get Brozier and Lingard as almost replacements for Vlasic and Yarmolenko, then I am fine with that. But the problem is Brozier, we're going to have to wait until Chelsea do their pre-season. So if we even do get Brozier, we're not getting a striker anytime soon, lads. Which is a problem. And if and if someone like Emmanuel Dennis, who's linked to Everton, and I think he wants to go to Everton, uh, because of the Nigerian connection with Alex Awobi, if he does go there, then we're going to have to put all our money into Brozier. Chelsea will know we've run out of targets. And we'll have to pay the big bag. And this is the problem. I know Hugo Etiquite, that whoever that striker is called, that went to the, the, the talks of Newcastle broke down and we was interested at one point. So I don't know whether we'll go back in for him. Um, I don't even know what... I, I don't know whether we're still interested in Mohamed Bayo. I don't know whether we're still interested in Baba Dieng. I think that's his name anyway, the guy from Marseille. That was meant to do a double swap deal with Coletta Carr in January. That Coletta Carr saga was another mad one. I wouldn't pay attention to anything unless you see a report by ex West Ham employee because he doesn't get things wrong. People try and use his name to do fake reports because they know people will believe it um, because he's the most reliable one. Um, with people like Clarence Hugh, who they're friends with uh, the, the owner, David Sullivan. He's constantly feeding them stories, and it's a bit of a Moyes agenda. They also thought that Bielsa was still at Leeds when the whole City Perkins thing came up. And yeah, that is what, like, listen, I wanted Dan Juma. I was very excited. 
Um, I usually don't take uh, a lot of these reports seriously, but we're gonna have to. I'm, I, I, I got excited, and <laughs> this is what happens when you get excited. Like, uh, it, it, it is a shame because I, if he stays in the Premier League, if he goes to another team in the Premier League and plays against us, I, I just can't be bothered. I'll be really pissed off. It, it, it looks like he wants to stay in London, but he could go to Newcastle because of Eddie Howe. So I don't know. And I saw I saw people say like he didn't get a goal and assist when he was in the Premier League last time. Well, it was his first season, so uh, I'm not going to take that a bit. I'm not going to take that seriously. He's proved himself in the Champions League, so uh, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see the logic in that. But each to their own. My um the second part of this is uh. Moving on to the Brozier and Lingard thing, and I spoke briefly on why we probably won't get Brozier straight away unless we offer a ridiculous amount of money, which is fair enough. Um, I'm not going to moan at, at a club. One thing I'll never do, I'll never moan at another club for charging and like so much for a player. Because this is what the market is. Leicester did it for Harry Maguire. Leicester got their money. Southampton are doing it for Ward-Prowse. He did sign a contract, and he's their club captain. He's a Southampton fan. He's a Southampton favourite. He's probably one of their better players. And yeah, they, they, if they if they're asking seventy five million, then um, they're allowed to do that because we do it with Declan Rice. We're allowed, to, uh, and I feel like we're allowed to do it because we don't want to sell him. So other teams should be allowed to do it as well. So we can't moan at other people for doing it. Um. This is the last day of all the free agents that you might see of like, this is like the last day of their contracts officially. So like the Andreas Christensen's, the Frank Kessies, the Usman Dembele's, the Paolo Dybala's, the Jesse Lingard's. Now with Jesse Lingard, would you still take Jesse Lingard? I feel like if you say no, I don't know the reason why. I feel like the whole money thing that people want to argue, I think is his agent. His agent is his brother. They're going to want more because they're a free agent. Uh, he's going to be over 100k anyway. So was Kurt Zuma. These are, this is Lingard who was a good reason why we got back into Europe. The second point people like to make is um, his attitude and all this. Now, Lingard was a guy who said Mark Noble and the rest of the West Ham lads helped him a lot by using his phone less and they have a no phone rule policy. Within the environment. So Lingard was on his phone less. like he would, But it was still like. He still like posted an Instagram story here and there. I get it. But it's like. I feel like it helped him a lot. And. When. When you see him with the lads. They clearly didn't have a problem with him. He has a winning mentality. He is a bit like. He was actually one of the reasons. Uh, why our game management was so much better. Than it usually is. And. The thing is, the reason why that is, is because he's played for a top club and he's played for a played under managers like Mourinho and Van Gogh, who are more, who are more like, not winning mentality necessarily, but it's like, that's not what I'm getting at. They, they know how to manage a game more than Moyes. Moyes wants to manage it the right way. He doesn't like the time wasted. He doesn't like doing all that stuff. But Lingard would do that. Wolves away. He frustrated the Wolves players. They wanted to kill him afterwards. Like, it's a player like that. It's a player like that we need. It's a player like that I want at my club, and he's already settled in, and I reckon his attitude will be completely fine. Um, if Moyes wants him, go and get him. I really hope we don't lose out on him, and I'll welcome him with open arms. I don't think age is an issue. He doesn't play like a 30-year-old. He plays like a 25-year-old almost. He's still got the pace. Um, on transition and in possession, he's, he'll be very good for us. Uh, don't get me wrong, against a low block, he's not the greatest, but... That's not the point, really. That's not the point, really. Excuse me. And uh, I, th I feel like with the transfer business we're doing now, we are actually, I feel like we still are a serious club. I feel like despite all of this, we have still shown points where we can say that the players we're linked with is very hopeful. Now, I don't know whether we're going to hijack this Owen Window. I think that's how you pronounce his name, the Dutch left-back. I've seen highlights of him, and I've seen a comp. I just want a, I just want a young left-back anyway, because Aaron Cresswell needs to be, like, play less games. 
He was targeted all last season by wingers. And there's a player that we are heavily linked with. It's Joachim Mele. I'm going to call him Mele like it's a, like it's a grenade in Call of Duty. But, um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> but, honestly, I first saw this guy in the Euros uh, last year. He was playing that left wing back. Uh, sometimes they'll break into a back four. Denmark when Christensen stepping into midfield. But he was still always in a wing back position. Now, the thing is with this, my problem is this guy's right footed and he's going to be playing at left back. And it's worked for Atalanta. And I've watched him play for Atalanta as well. He still plays good for his club. And my thing is, my, my only two things are is that he's a very good he's a very good player. I think he'll be class for us in a sense. But I need to see him in more defensive situations. I need to see him on more 1v1s. Uh, a comp is not going to change my mind about that because you can mislead with a comp. Um, and also, with someone right-footed playing at left-back, do we just want to get a number right-back and put Ben Johnson there because Ben Johnson's played a lot of good games at left-back? I'm not saying Ben Johnson's better than Joaquin Mele by any, by any means, but... My thing is, is that Joaquin Bailey, because he's right footed, he's going to want to cut in a bit more. And the problem is, that means your winger is going to have to hug the touchline a bit. Now, if we're going to have Said Ben Rambo, Pablo Fornells, or Jesse Lingard out on a wing, if they're hugging the touchline, you're not bringing the best out of your wingers either. So this guy really needs to use his left foot a lot more. This Joaquin Bailey thing is not done, by the way. It'll be a great signing, and he'll make us way better in possession. And we need a left back that just straight overlaps, if I'm honest. And maybe he'll do that, but for me, he'd probably be a better winger. And to be fair, there's going to be games where we'll face like we've got Tottenham and Chelsea like twice in a row. You'll see us put uh, play with wing backs in that game just to match up with Tottenham and Chelsea. And like he, him and Cresswell will be like the way Cresswell and Masawaki used to play, like. Together on the touchline, both being direct, both crossing the ball, both helping each other down the line, both playing like extra wingers. So, yeah, uh, I would like any sort of young left back. Um, I wouldn't even mind Anthony Robinson from Fulham, but I don't think they're going to sell him because um, they want to stay up, which is fair enough. But anyway, that is it, guys. This I just realised this video is a bit longer than usual. Like my past videos have been four to six minutes but this one is nearly 13 there was a lot to talk about because i don't know when we're gonna sign our next player i don't think any player is gonna get done anytime soon uh maybe next week hopefully but if you guys did enjoy this video please leave a like on the video please subscribe if you're new please share everywhere i want i want this channel to grow and grow we're getting decent views for the channel my size lately so please share the video um and yeah i'll see you guys next time